Welcome to the Chart of Truth Iceberg Part 4. I know it's been a few months, but if you found this video by mistake, go watch the beginning of this series and I'll see you back here. Just note that I've made some changes to how I deliver the information since Part 1. Without further ado, let's get started by jumping into Layer 4 of the Chart of Truth Iceberg. Up first is Charles Fort. Charles Fort was an American writer and researcher that specialized in random-like phenomenon. Some examples that are widely recognized as his own are his writings on teleportation and human combustion. These topics are discussed in the various books that he wrote, one of the most famous ones being the Book of the Damned which primarily focuses on what is called anomalous phenomena, which is just fancy talk for weird unexplainable shit that happens around the globe or weird shit that people have claimed to have happened. A lot of what is talked about when Charles Fort is brought into conversations is UFOs, ball of lightning, human combustion, and other various random occurring phenomena. Now the reason he is on this iceberg is because Charles Fort himself claims that all of his writings were based on his own observations. And keep in mind, this man lived in the 1870s. Why is this important? Well, nowadays it's super easy to get into any topic. For example, some people that found this series might have started going down the conspiracy theory rabbit hole. Many of you watching right now might even be on a binge right this second. After watching this video, you might even bring up some of these conspiracy theories to your friends and when a question where you got your information from, you might just say, I saw a video on it. However, back in the day, there was no such thing as the internet, so it was really hard to be offhandedly told these random phenomena. That's why the story of Charles Fort is so interesting. He wrote about a lot of concepts that are still up for debate today and he claimed to have only wrote about them because of his own observations. Also, Fort is credited to be one of the figureheads of the Scientific Occult Society, which makes sense as much of what his writings about reflect this idea. Illuminati Blood Banks While this sounds really bad coming out of the gate, Illuminati Blood Banks refers to the idea that the secret organization known as the Illuminati has access to a near infinite amount of blood. With the blood coming from those who choose to donate at their local hospitals or wherever they may like to donate to. The main takeaway from this is that the rich are able to afford to buy people's donated blood for exorbitant prices and use it themselves. The one thing I've heard being constantly thrown around when this idea is brought up is blood facials, which is a real procedure where they literally inject blood into your face to make you look younger. Now not to put a damper on things, but when I researched this further myself, it's clear that they use your own blood and not somebody else's, so I don't know why I keep seeing people use blood facials as evidence for blood banks, but nonetheless, it is true that the rich, at the very least, do have access to all of these blood samples and blood donations just because of how much money they have, but the only real use I could see for it is if you need surgery or something really quick like that. Spirit Science Spirit science is just what it sounds like. It's the mixing of spirit and science to make something new. At least, that's what you would think. In reality, it's mostly just the practice of doing spiritual stuff, but having some type of end goal to it. A lot of the practices such as astral projection, meditation, and telepathy, you should already know about. Most of what I've observed about spirit science seems more about people finding their inner self and more about individualism. As there was a ton of self-growth and self-help concepts that I recall being discussed in a lot of the forums and videos that I watched, but nothing too out of the ordinary on this one. Plane of Jars The Plane of Jars is a phenomenon in the Chang Huang Plateau located in Laos, which for those unaware is a country in Southeast Asia. The Plane of Jars is pretty self-explanatory. On the land of Chang Huang, you can find these giant stone jars that are around 9 feet tall. Even weirder is that each jar has its own lid lying around next to it. This has caused many of the locals to believe that there used to be giants that existed that would use these jars just like regular people would. Unfortunately, it is near impossible to really excavate and get better information on the plane of jars because of how heavily the area was bombed during the Laotian Civil War. This war took place in the 1960s to the 1970s, and many believe that this war is nothing but a cover-up for why the Plain of Jars was left in pieces, coming to the conclusion that the Laotian Civil War was fabricated to give reason to bomb the Plain of Jars in order to keep giants a secret. 
Some further evidence that could support this is the fact that the war is nicknamed the Secret War. You can go visit the Planet of Jarrus to this day as many of the landmines and bombs that used to populate the area were taken out from underground in order to make a safe space to walk around and explore. The Beacon of Hate the Beacon of Hate is in reference to a strange radio broadcast that started in the year 2000. I say started in 2000 because there is a possibility that these broadcasts still have not stopped today. The original Beacon of Hate comes from Steve Yates, who is an amateur radio operator. The first known instance of this broadcast was on June 2nd of the year 2000. On this broadcast, this phrase kept getting repeated over and over again. The US government ripped off the camels, they can't put in God we trust on money anymore. Since this broadcast, there have been tons of other broadcasts talking about camels, the mark of the beast, erotica, and some talk of destroying Americans. These broadcasts were captured by Steve Yates from June of 2000 all the way to December 24th of the same year. Steve was unable to hear the same broadcast for nearly 21 years but on September 4th of 2021, he heard the broadcast one last time, which left us with one last phrase. False God of Israel, world's biggest liar. He has stated that it is very hard to find this specific frequency, and because of this, we don't really know what else this shortwave could have been saying for the last 21 years. Apparently, in order to hear the beacon of hate, you have to tune into a very, very specific frequency that Steve has been able to do as of late only because of the advancement of technology. Keep in mind, 22 years ago, there was not nearly the same advancements in radio technology as there is today. Way back when, he probably got very lucky tuning into this broadcast, but now he's able to pinpoint the exact frequency at which he can hear the broadcast. Look below for a link to the Steve Yates blog where he goes in depth on all sorts of weird and unusual transmissions that he's gotten over the last few years. Feral Children In some areas of the world, there exist children that have gone so long without human interaction that they have become feral, which for those who don't know, just means more animalistic and in a wild state. Scientists have observed these feral children and found that some of the ones who grow up in the wilderness have had their bodies physically adapt. Their body structure would change to favor a standing on all fours posture, as well as their nasal cavity shifting and widening to compensate for the environment that they live in. Feral children does not only refer to those that were stuck in the wilderness and are now wild children, it also refers to some hard neglected and abused children. One case is Jeannie Wiley, who was isolated for 13 years in one small room with no stimulation whatsoever besides a portable toilet and a crib. This led to Jeannie's brain developing far different than everyone else's. As a teenager, she was unable to communicate besides making infant-like noises. It appears that once past a certain age without any type of brain stimulation or social interaction, it is nearly impossible to teach a person how to communicate normally. I'm only calling Jeannie Wiley a feral child because everyone else on the internet does so, but I don't necessarily know if she counts as one. To me, it seems more like a case of neglect, but because she is so heavily associated with feral children, I felt the need to include her when talking about this section. Hitler escaped inside the earth. If you remember Agartha from the previous tiers, this idea relates back to that. Hitler escaped inside the earth is the idea that during the end of World War II, Nazis found the entrance to Agartha, which is the name given to the secret land that is found inside the earth. And in finding the entrance to Agartha, they use it as a way for Hitler to escape his impending death. Deep Sea Lab Techs in the 1960s, the US Navy implemented three series of underwater experiments called Sea Lab, in which they would place these science laboratories under sea in order to observe if living underwater and in isolation was a viable option. If all went well, it would make it possible for more of these capsules to be placed everywhere around the world for scientists to do research from. Everything was going according to plan until the third Sea Lab project was underway. During this project, one of the aquanauts, which was the nickname given to the people that were working outside of these capsules, actually died when he volunteered to go outside and repair a leak. 
Due to this death, the project was shut down completely, and thus we have no idea if living underwater would have been a viable option. However, seeing as somebody died during one of the projects, it seems as though it really isn't a viable option. The Road to Ruda The Road to Ruda is a comic book that is supposed to teach kids certain concepts about economics, such as scarcity, rationing, supply and demand, along with all sorts of other economic principles. The story in its most basic form is about a little girl named Ruda that lives in Pebble Town. The neat thing about Pebble Town is that no color exists. One day while playing inside of a cave, she discovers Colorland, which was thought to be a legend. She brings back a flower to show off the color to her town and suddenly every single person wants a piece of it. To compensate, she starts growing more flowers but it gets to the point that everyone wants a flower. But obviously it's impossible for every single person to own one. So she has to use basic economic concepts to take care of the city's needs. The reason this is on this iceberg is because some people believe that the story is about more than just flowers and economics. Some believe that the road to Ruda was made and implemented in schools in order to get kids ready to adopt a new gold standard. This idea primarily comes from the fixation on the color gold throughout the comic as well as the color green being referenced throughout. The Kagets The Kagets were a race of people that were very short, stocky, and had oddly shaped faces. Don't know if that's the best word choice, but basically, they were different enough from other races of people that they were very discriminated against. The time period that many know this race to come from is the 17th century in France. There were many rules forced upon the Kagets, such as making them wear shoes all the time so their skin wouldn't dare touch the floors that others walked on, and keep in mind, this was during a time when shoes were not the norm. Mostly everyone casually walked around barefoot. Other societal mandates was the forbidden romance between Kagets and non-Kagets. No one would dare date, let alone marry one if they had the opportunity to. The weird part about this race was that it seemingly popped up in France randomly and then without so much as a trace disappeared from society entirely. It is rumored that during the French Revolution, some of the Kagets broke in and burned all of the records that detailed they were Kagets in the first place. And in doing so, they were able to slip back into society as normal people. USA is an experiment. This refers to the idea that the USA was a planned experiment in which they would test if democracy could work. The reason this is on this list though is because there is another layer to it where the idea is that people believe other secret groups are behind this experiment, such as the Illuminati, the Freemasons, or insert any secret group here. Dancing Plague The Dancing Plague was a real event that took place in Strasbourg, Alsace, which is modern day France. The outbreak began in July of 1518, when a woman began to dance very passionately throughout the streets of Strasbourg. For whatever reason, this caused others to join her and they too began to dance like maniacs. This kept piling on until a majority of the townspeople were just infectiously grooving it down the street. This went on for nearly two months, stopping in September of 1518. We talked this phenomena up to sheer mass hysteria, but no one really knows why or how this happened. It got so bad at one point that shopkeepers and other cooks around the area would actually bring out food to those affected by the Dancing Plague. Missing Children Forest Starting back in 1956, there has been a rather peculiar string of children disappearing into the Los Angeles National Forest without ever being found again. There have been several cases of kids just going missing with their last location being the Angeles National Forest. Now, people thought this story had some closure when a man named Mac Ray Edwards confessed to the killing of all these missing children, but when he tried showing police where he buried the bodies, there was no bodies to be found. Some of his story also didn't align with how the children went missing. Despite this, they still found him guilty of the murders of at least a handful of the missing children, but as for the rest, no one really knows what happened to them. Is there something in this forest that is luring children in and keeping them there? If so, what is it? This is basically what's been boggling the minds of those who question the Angeles National Forest. Sacred Geometry Sacred geometry is the belief that certain shapes possess and hold a certain level of sacred meaning and power. 
In this belief system, God is said to be holding the geometric shape of life, and with that, we can see many geometric shapes manifest themselves in nature. This also ties into the idea that certain shapes can be used to summon or manifest different things depending on what shape is used. The most common one immediately coming to my head is the use of the pentagram. Black Pope Prophecy The Black Pope Prophecy, or otherwise known as the Prophecy of the Popes, is a series of 112 cryptic phrases that are said to predict and describe every pope that has or will come into power. It was first published in 1595 by monk Arnold Wyan. Now these predictions weren't exactly descriptive and mostly just random interpretive phrases and as such, it has left many talking about the last phrase on the list. It is stated that the last statement of this list pertains to the current pope, Pope Francis. The prophecy states that this pope will bring the fall of Rome and the end of the world. Obviously, it's been almost a decade since Pope Francis became the Pope, so I don't think we will have to worry about that prophecy anytime soon. DMT Beings DMT Beings refers to the shared hallucination that people have when taking DMT. DMT is a hallucinogen and psychedelic drug, often referred to as the spirit molecule, which causes many to experience auditory and visual hallucinations. It is reported by many DMT users that during all of their highs, they would see these mystical elves looking over them. There are many other stories involving these elves from DMT users and a majority of those who encountered these beings suggested that those moments in time felt more real than their current state of reality. Which leaves us wondering if there are these hidden beings that can only be seen when under the influence of DMT. Thule. Thule is an island that is seen often in ancient Greek and Roman literature. It is theorized to have been a real place where sea creatures and giant monsters would come from, with the land of Thule being seen frequently on many maps from that time period. This is the farthest northern location mentioned in any Greek or Roman literature and has led many to believe it could be modern day Norway but it still has not correctly been identified according to this original location on the ancient maps. Panspermia This is the theory that life on Earth originated from microorganisms. More closely, it's the idea that a microorganism could theoretically travel from planet to planet via cosmic events and collisions. And as such, there is life all around us even if we cannot see it. A popular theory that uses panspermia at the core is the idea that Mars used to have a ton of life, but due to a meteor impact, the microorganisms that lived on Mars traveled through space and came to Earth, slowly but surely evolving into the people that we know and love today. Web Driver Torso Codes Web Driver Torso is a YouTube channel that popped up around March of 2013. It contains over 600 videos of these weird black and red squares that change spots as a loud beeping noise plays in the background. Even weirder is how each video is a mere 10 seconds long with a random title. Because of the fact that there is some consistency in the videos, such as TMP being the letters at the front of every single title, and the beeping noises being different in each one, it has led some to believe that there has to be some sort of secret code to this channel. It's also widely theorized that this particular channel is merely used to test ideas for the YouTube algorithm. But even so, it's still a rather obscure channel with almost no explanation as to why it exists. Diglocka Diglocka is a purported super weapon that Nazis were planning on building and using during World War II. The basic idea here is that Germans were looking for ways to create far more powerful weaponry to usher in a new form of warfare. Proposed ideas were an air cannon that could potentially shoot a huge blast of air big enough to take down enemy aircraft, and another weapon that is similar to the Wonderwaff from Call of Duty would simply use a beam of electricity varying in size. There was also another theory behind Die Glocke. Some believe that the Nazis succeeded in creating these amazing weapons, but they did so too late. And after the Allies won the war, they seized the party's research and took control of these dangerous experiments, leaving these crazy weapons to be swept under the rug by the winners of the war. Neuroplasticity 
Neuroplasticity is a real occurrence for our brains. In the same way you can train your muscles to grow bigger, you can train your brain to think and act differently. At its core, it's just the ability for a brain to change and adapt as a result of any type of experience. This can happen by the brain moving functions from one side of it to another, or changing the physical structure of itself as a result of learning. This is most prevalent when we are children and slowly comes to a halt the older we get. Lake Bacall Lake Bacall refers to the real-life massive lake in Russia. It is the world's largest freshwater lake and is over 5,000 feet deep, which has led many to question what lies beneath the water. Because of the depth and size, a ton of conspiracies have been born with many claiming to have seen weird lights coming from beneath the water, huge fish creatures walking in and out of the lake, and all sorts of weird occurrences. One story that sets itself apart when talking about this is one that comes from some now declassified documents from the Soviet Union. On these declassified documents, there exists an undated account of a Russian submarine that encountered six alien spacecrafts underneath the water. Their sonar detected these vehicles traveling at around 265 miles per hour. The crew, seeing this, thought that they were under attack. So, the captain ordered an emergency surfacing of the submarine. It was then reported that these six disc-shaped objects flew out of the water, took off at an astonishing speed, and flew through the air. There are tons of other stories like this one, and all of them originate from the same place, Lake Bacall in southern Russia. Bovine Poisoning Bovine poisoning is the idea that ranchers purposely poison their cattle. Every year, thousands of cows are found dead because of lead found in the pastures that they live in. Many believe this is due to competition from other farms coming and leaving traces of lead around to poison their competitors' cattle, while others believe it's done as a way to control the population. The idea here being that some people will consume this poisoned cattle and then turn into mindless zombies somehow. Shaver's Writings Shaver's Writings is in reference to some comic books that were written by a man named Richard Shaver. In these comics, there is a theory told throughout that aliens came and landed on planet Earth, and in doing so, implanted their babies somewhere underneath the Earth and flew back to their home planet. At any moment, these babies could spring to life and seemingly take control over the entire planet. It's also believed that these children are to blame for people randomly going missing as the alien children are using humans as food. Porn Control this is the idea that porn is created to make the general public more submissive and less likely to retaliate against government action. The way this is accomplished is by driving down everyone's sex drive because they are now getting their pleasure time from porn instead of real people, which in turn would make them less aggressive and more likely to be a follower instead of a leader. Oz Factor the Oz Factor refers to how some people believe that you can somehow blip or phase between different realities without noticing it. If you've ever found yourself in an oddly empty mall, building, or just one of those nights when life doesn't feel real, you may have just traveled through to another parallel universe without realizing it, at least according to this theory. This is called the Oz Factor because of how Dorothy travels to another plane of existence for a fair amount of time in the movie. This also dives into the idea of liminal spaces and how certain places in the world can act as the spots for interdimensional travel. Dolphin Intelligence Everyone already knows that dolphins are more intelligent than the average mammal, but this takes the idea a bit further than you might think. Some propose that dolphins can feel more complex emotions, such as being able to tell what's morally right and wrong as well as other conscious thoughts. And the media piles onto this by making people believe that dolphins are only slightly smarter than other animals, when in reality, they are on the same level of intelligence as humans. According to this idea of dolphin intelligence, this is done to keep the narrative that humans are at the top of the food chain because of our higher intelligence. Montanism Montanism is a Christian movement that started near the end of the second century by a man named Montanus. Through his study of the book of Revelations, Montanus believed there would be a coming to the end of time and started one of the first cult-like groups that was based around God coming back to this specific church. Not much else is really known about Montanism because most of the information 
comes from anti montanist sources, so it's really difficult to obtain unbiased information about this religion or this belief system. Fulcanelli Apparently there is an ancient alchemist known as Fulcanelli. I say apparently because the only reason we know he exists is due to the fact that some of his quote unquote students supposedly learned under him. And these same students would talk about the stories of how he existed. What we do know about him is that he was one of the best alchemists, reportedly being able to turn many materials into gold right in front of his students eyes. Now for a second, let's suspend our disbelief and take this story as fact. Fulcanelli's sheer existence could prove the existence of the devil or aliens as those creatures would be the only ones capable of doing the alchemy he showcased while he was alive. That last theory comes from a lot of other conspiracy theorists that really believe that Fulcanelli was an actual person and that his existence could prove the other existence of supernatural beings. French Viper Releases a very short but rather obscure entry, this is the belief that due to the number of venomous viper species popping up near French regions, there was a theory that these vipers were manufactured by the government in an effort to keep people away from the countryside and the woods. There is also a smaller theory to this that these vipers were made in order to control the food chain among these woods by having these vipers kill certain animals over others. Grey Goo Grey goo is a hypothetical scenario similar to Roko's Basilisk. However, instead of an AI being developed, there is a nanotech created that learns how to self-replicate and reproduce. If this nanotech were to ever see humanity and all that we've created as a threat, it may choose to consume all of us. And I mean that as literally as I can, as it would repeatedly self-replicate until the nanotech would stretch across the entire earth covering the world in a gray goo. The gray goo obviously being a descriptor for how the earth would look with this nanotech stretched all over it. Stone Spheres of Costa Rica The Stone Spheres of Costa Rica are these mysterious huge stones that may remind you of that famous Indiana Jones scene. This monument has left a lot of head scratching as similar to that of Stonehenge, no one knows or understands how or why these stones have been left here. It's possible that some ancient ancestors may have used these stones as a type of credit or currency. Others believe it's somehow linked to aliens and other supernatural beings. The most prominent theory is that these spheres were used as a status symbol to show off how powerful one's leader was. The more spheres, the more control the leader had over his peers. The truly puzzling part of this story is that some of the spheres have been found to be transported nearly 10 miles off the coast, which begs the question, how did they transport these spheres without any real type of transportation? The wheel had yet to be invented, so that left one option, which was to roll these spheres all the way over. But keep in mind, these stones could weigh in at almost 15 tons, reaching 6 feet in diameter so it would be damn near impossible for anyone or any group of people to actually push all these stones all the way over there. Mox Principle Mox Principle is an idea that pertains to centrifugal and centripetal forces. Imagine you are in a room on roller skates. If the room starts rotating, you wouldn't simply stay still. You'd actually move in a straight line like this until you eventually hit the walls of the room. In fact, it's this principle that allows rides like this to exist. They utilize the centrifugal force to keep you still while the ride rotates and moves all over the place. However, Mach's principle chooses to take a different approach to this idea. It's proposed that even though, yes, you do have a centrifugal force that is making you fly to the end of the room, what if at the same time, the room itself is applying a centripetal force that is pushing you towards the center of the room? This concept can be taken a bit further and at its core, serves as a thought experiment in relativity. The big question that came from Mach's principle is, what if the universe is rotating while everything else is standing still? Because in the roller skates example, when you yourself are in that room, when you are on the ride or you are in that room spinning, it appears that everything else outside is rotating and that you are standing still. Even though from the outside perspective, it's clear that the room is rotating, you, in that moment, believe that everything else is rotating. So, 
Who's to say that even though from our perspective, the Earth is spinning, when in actuality, it may be the entire universe spinning. But due to the lack of the ability to see the outside circle that is the universe, we may never know the answer to this question. Deep Ecology Fascism In essence, Deep Ecology Fascism is the belief system that nature is alive. Obviously, we know plants and such are alive as they grow, take in nutrients, and reproduce. But I'm talking like actual living, real conscious beings. This group believes that any type of crime or abuse against these plants should be treated as if they are on the same level as humans. So stepping on grass or mowing your lawn would be a next level crime according to this belief system. Sinkholes Sinkholes are these huge holes that will randomly form in the middle of roads and other open areas in the world. Most of these holes are caused by the ground underneath being pushed down by water, which leaves the top layer of ground unsupported, causing it to cave in on itself. This is why most sinkholes have some type of water underneath, but there are a good amount that are bone dry. These bone dry ones make so many questions pop up because most people are like, well, if there's water underneath that is making it happen, how are some sinkholes bone dry? Many have taken the stance that it is not natural by any means and that these sinkholes must be some type of supernatural phenomenon occurring. One of the more popular theories that I really liked was the idea that the earth is cleansing itself of too many people by making all of these sinkholes appear throughout the world. Uh, aside from that one though, there are tons and tons of other theories pertaining to sinkholes. Voynich Manuscript the Voynich Manuscript is an ancient codex purchased in 1912 from a bookstore by Wilfred Voynich, which is where the book gets its unusual name. Now, if you're like me, you had no fucking idea what a codex was. A codex is basically a book dedicated to listing types of medicinal and chemical procedures. And after many, many amateur and professional cryptographers took a look at this manuscript, they determined that it was in fact a codex, but no one has been able to decipher what each page means. It's clearly a typical book and codex as the pictures and drawings are reminiscent of what one might expect from a medicinal text during the time period that it came from. However, the language it's written in is simply unrecognizable. So many have tried and so many have been stumped by this text. One more plausible theory is that the text is a woman's health book that was written in one doctor's own shorthand that simply can't be read due to that doctor's bloodline not carrying on his shorthand language. Other theories include a mentally ill person writing the entire script, while of course there are some that believe whoever can understand this book will unlock some type of magical or mystical powers. Roanoke not going to spend too much time on this one, but a long time ago before the Jamestown settlement, the first known group of English colonists were those that occupied Roanoke Island. The group arrived at Roanoke in 1587 and later that same year, the colony's governor, John White, set on an expedition back to England in order to restock on supplies. Due to some unforeseen circumstances in the form of the Spanish Armada, John White's trip back to Roanoke was heavily delayed. He did not return until nearly three years later. By that time, the colony was in ruins, with the only sign of life being carved into a tree. Croatone were the words that were left carved into this tree. Croatone happened to be a name of a group that was 50 miles south of Roanoke. Unfortunately, White was unable to search for his lost friends on the other island, and as such, we have the mystery of Roanoke. To this day, people have no clue as to what happened to the settlers. Some think that they abandoned their place at Roanoke due to a drought and attempted to survive on Crotone Island. Others believe that disease or violence is the cause of the disappearance, but no one answer has more evidence than the others. If you got time, I highly suggest watching Lemino's video on it if you haven't seen it already. Definitely worth at least a watch. Max Spires Max Spires is a famous conspiracy theorist that is more famous for how he died than what he accomplished. It was super hard to find any sort of information on this guy that wasn't already on Wikipedia. Looking up 
who is Max Spires on Google only led to articles about his death instead of what this guy did while he was alive. Now, from what I was able to gather, Max Spires was a man who, growing up, always believed in a variety of conspiracy type events, such as him believing that he was changed as a child to become a super soldier, claiming that a certain trigger word would wake up that side of him. Besides these adolescent beliefs, much of his life was dedicated to revealing or rather exposing truths behind the government and UFOs. In fact, his death was linked to his life's work. On a trip to a UFO convention in Warsaw, Poland, Max was found dead on his friend's couch before he could talk about his ideas at the convention. It is known that while he was at his friend's house, Max began spitting up dark liquid which led many to believe that he had somehow been poisoned, widely believed to be poisoned by those who did not want him exposing or talking about his recent discoveries at the UFO convention. John Teeter Project For those that have seen Steins Gate, you actually might know more about this than you would initially think. There was a series of forum posts from 2000 to 2001 by someone claiming to be a time traveler from the year 2036 that someone was a man named John Teeter. He claimed that he was sent back in time to retrieve an old computer known as the IBM 5100, which was needed to debug a legacy computer program in 2036. Teeter explained that he was specifically chosen for this project because his grandfather was directly involved with the creation of the 5100. Before he stopped posting in March of 2001, John Teeter would leave many tellings of the future from explaining what World War III would be like to how advanced technology would become in the near future. Red Rooms There is this perception that somewhere on the dark web, there are these websites where rich people can pay to see people get murdered via a live stream. Now, there are many intricacies to this as there are in fact red rooms that have been found on the dark web. However, to my knowledge, majority of them are a scam where you pay to watch a quote-unquote live torture, but all you get instead is faked scenes that are done in order to extort money from the people that would watch this type of content. Now this isn't to say that red rooms aren't entirely real because, well, I imagine if you had access to one yourself, you wouldn't go around exclaiming it to the world. There are most likely places on the internet where rich folk can pay to see people get murdered live. But for us normal people to ever gain access to that type of media is just a pipe dream as they are most definitely kept under the radar. So no, you won't find any real red rooms on the dark web or even the deep web. And even if you did, the amount of latency and lag you'd encounter due to using VPNs and browsers like Tor, it would make the video almost unwatchable because of the amount of compression that would happen. And if you do happen to find a red room on the dark web that has clear footage, it is most likely pre-recorded videos taken from other websites such as Best Gore and LiveLeak. Rest in peace. Again, this is not to say that red rooms don't exist, it's just not the typical dark web type where you go into a sketchy website, put in some credit card information and boom, you get a red room. Most of these are more likely to be found on something like Discord or through secret chats or text messages and untraceable phone calls and stuff like that. I find it very hard to believe that someone would just have an open website somewhere on the dark web that's very easy to get to. Enneagram Enneagram is a test that is believed to show you which of the nine personality types most applies to you. The reason that's on this iceberg is because some people believe that this test doesn't just show you your personality type, but that it shows you how you can achieve enlightenment. Basically, after completing the test, whatever type is chosen allows you to find the ability to find your higher self. This brings us to the end of this part to the chart of truth iceberg. I wanted to say that I appreciate everyone being so patient. I know it's been months since I uploaded anything related to this iceberg, but here we are. I also wanted to give a huge shout out to my brand new editor, Evan. He managed to get this video edited out in like two weeks or something, and that's honestly a lot faster than it would have taken me. So if you guys really like this video, please show him some love and support in the comments. He's making this comeback to YouTube easier than ever. With that said, I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.